The internet's a jungle. Every click is logged. Every search is sold. And there's a marketing intern somewhere out there still laughing at your query about how to fix a five terabytes of corrupted data. If you ever wished you could browse the web like a ghost with an internet connection, well, you're in luck. That's where proxies come in. A proxy server hides your IP, masks your location, and lets you surf the web like a digital ninja. No traces, no bans, no awkward targets for ads that you searched back in 2021 in Google. And today we're gonna break down what a proxy server is and how it works. Here's the easiest way to picture it. When you visit a website, you basically walk into the front door and saying, hey, it's me. Here's my IP, my location, and probably my embarrassing search history. A proxy is like a fake ID for the internet. It hides who you are, where you are, and what you're doing, all while letting you look legit. To the website, you're now somebody else, or a group of people. Maybe from New York, maybe from Tokyo. Who knows? But a proxy is only as good as the network behind it. You need proxies that isn't shared by half the world using it at the same time. It needs to be clean, fast, and not get banned every five minutes. That's why smart developers, agency owners, and businesses use proxy networks like Zini Proxy. They've got huge pools of residential, mobile IPs in 190 locations, super fast rotation, and clean connections, and actually stays unblocked. I use them all the time for my automation projects and testing bots or tools that I find on GitHub for the next cool thing that I want to do. Basically, Zini Proxy makes your traffic look human and allows you to trick websites into making their data accessible to multiple people. That provides all different types of proxies in one platform. Data center proxies, which are fast, cheap, but weak. They come from cloud servers, not real homes. Great for speed tests, terrible for stealth. You're definitely not gonna get past the liquor store with this time. Residential proxies, on the other hand, are real IPs for real people. These are your stealth mode. Sites can tell the difference between you and a normal human being shopping on Amazon. Then we have mobile proxies, which can have 4G, 5G IPs straight from people's phones. These are the ninjas, expensive, but practically invisible to anti-bot systems. Practically, the CIA on the web. Catastrophes are basically unheard of with these guys. Straight professionals. Why do people use proxies at all? In web scraping, proxies are a necessity, so you don't get your IP banned every 69 seconds. Managing dozens of accounts for marketing or automation, or agencies that are fed up with headaches trying to manage all their customers, or testing ads and SEO in different countries, with some people getting click frauded for your ads all the time, you know, spending money for no damn reason. In 2020, for example, when bots were crashing Supremes and Yeezy servers trying to get the latest release or as much of it as possible, or just watching anime that is just not available in your region. Here's a simple way to see how it works. Basically, you proxy website. You send a request, the proxy grabs it, forwards it, and sends a response back. To the site, it looks like the proxy did everything. It's like having a stun double, but for your browser. Now, not every proxy is created equal. Reproxies? Yeah. Those are basically open invitations to errors, malware, and a bunch of pop-ups at your screen just to find out your crypto wallet has been drained. Good proxies come from your reliable networks, big IP pools, real infrastructure behind it. The provider I recommend is GDPR and CCPR approved, so it's a verified provider by the EU and the US of A. So yeah, that's proxies in a nutshell. Your digital middleman that protects your privacy, bypasses restrictions, and keeps the web as little creepy as possible. Whether you're scraping data, automating work, or just tired of websites bullying you with captchas, get yourself some residential proxies. If you're poor, maybe get a job at McDonald's until you get your first cash. Then you can worry about becoming the next Zuckerberg of data scraping and selling it for profit. Stay stealthy, stay curious, and remember, the only thing more valuable than data is knowing how to hide where you got it.